All right, what's up guys? So on today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how the Zenvo ST1 powertrain works and how all the routing works because um, it's a pretty frequently asked question that people ask on our page when we post about this car and how the routing works, which I'll show you guys right now. So let me go to edit and let me choose a color that you guys can see. So uh, just the basic of this powertrain pretty much. So the Zenvo ST1 uses an LS7, which originally is a naturally aspirated V8 but Zenvo added a turbocharger and a supercharger. And this is way different from their new engine, which is a twin charge, uh, not twin charge, but a twin supercharge, which uses two centrifugal two superchargers, which act like a turbocharger, but they're belt fed instead of exhaust gas fed. So let's see how it works. So usually there's a ducting on the side of the engine. This is a rear mid engine, right? So air gets pulled into the compressor side of the turbo and here's the routing that it takes up here to this intercooler right here. So the purpose of the intercooler is to cool down the charged air. So as you increase the pressure, the heat will rise as well. And you want the air to be as cold as possible as it will become more dense and more oxygen equals more power, essentially. So that's the purpose of the intercooler. This is an air to air intercooler, not an air to water, which personally I would use an air to water with a mid engine layout, but that's how they want to route it. And then the cooled air after the intercooler goes right here into the supercharger. And it could either be a roots or a screw supercharger. It really doesn't matter. They work the same. And then it goes into the intake manifold right into the engine. And as the compressor wheel spins, this turbine wheel spins as well. And from the exhaust manifold, then it goes to the exhaust system that this car runs. So it's a pretty cool system. I'm not sure if they have a bypass valve where here's like the intake pipe and it could go directly into the supercharger, but I'm pretty sure they want the air to be um, cooled within the intercooler. So it's a pretty cool system. Um, personally, I would do it a bit differently because I wouldn't want to run this intercooler right here. And let me show you guys how I would run it. All right, so I'm on a whiteboard. Let me show you guys how I would personally run it. So let me route it the same. Here's the turbocharger cold side. Here's the turbocharger hot side. Here's the down pipe, pretty much same as how they did it. And the intake pipe right here that goes to the air filter. Same way as they did it. And then the supercharger is right here. Throttle body. So from the turbocharger compressor, it would go directly into the supercharger. And then this will utilize the air to water intercooler. So here's a supercharger. Here's like a, the pulley right here. And then the intake manifold is right underneath the air to water. So you could see a bunch of supercharged cars like Hellcat, the LT4, I believe, in the Camaro Z01 has this as well in a Z06. So air would go into the supercharger and then it would just go directly into the air to water intercooler, into the intake manifold and pretty much into the engine. This makes it much more efficient, personally, in my opinion, and less piping, which creates less lag. But essentially the whole purpose of having a supercharger is to reduce the lag pretty much, pretty much like no lag as well. But I believe this is much more efficient as well. And let me see, I'll show you. So the front of the car would have, you could double stack this. So you can have the radiator, these aren't boobies, right? But you can have the radiator and the heat exchanger for the intercooler. So then the fan is back here. So the first one could be the heat exchanger second one ac condenser and then the third one right here is the radiator and you can duct it as however you want but i believe this one is much more efficient than how they would design it but the way they design it is much less complicated because you don't need a water tank which also increases weight and you don't need a water pump which could reduce reliability and also um, instead of having an air water intercooler underneath and take mat underneath the supercharger this also increases the height, which for some cars, it will increase the center of gravity. So I'm pretty sure they wanted to reduce that height, which they went for the side mount intercooler. 
which it works fine no difference so this is a different photo of how it looks um air comes into this side intake right here goes to the compressor side of the turbo it routes the same way we explained with the intercooler right here and it goes into the supercharger here's a different photo you can see the downpipe but look how big the turbo is but yeah it looks like there could be a bypass to here i'm not sure but currently what i'm seeing is just it routes to the intercooler then the, the supercharger but yeah, I believe there's only another car that does it. It's the Polestar one. Don't quote me on this, but that's the only new car that does it. Older cars like the Lancia Delta has a twin charge system as well. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty rare, um, pretty rare system to have. Not many cars do it anymore because you can get away with hybrid systems. But yeah, it's a really cool system. I hope this explains you guys how the system works. If you guys want me to explain other powertrains, let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you're driving your dream car.